Hi everybody, welcome to another class. Uh, this week is going to be a bit different from the rest of the weeks because this week is midterm week. So we are going to be taking the midterm this week and as you'll notice there are no discussions or little assessments this week. Uh, it is just geared towards the midterm. And so uh, what I want to do is go over uh, what the midterm is going to look like, give you a couple examples of sample questions and then provide a rubric so that you know exactly what points to hit on when taking your midterm. Uh, also, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that on Tuesday and Wednesday this week at 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, I will be holding Zoom meetings, so if you have any questions about any of the material that we've covered up to this point, we can chat about it via uh, via the internet. Uh, so perhaps some of you that have questions that might be a little bit more difficult to answer in an email can sign on to the, the Zoom chat and we can talk uh, via video. And so for the midterm, it's going to be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. And I'm actually not going to post the midterm up until after the Zoom meeting on Wednesday. So the midterm will go up on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Anytime after that, you can take the assessment just as long as you take it before 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. So you should have... Uh, four or five days to really uh, prepare, look over the material that we've been covering throughout this term, and then take the assessment. And so the assessment's gonna be made up of two essay questions, and each question you'll have to answer in a separate essay. Now the length should be between 300 and 400 words each, and you'll have a time of about 120 minutes or two hours to, to finish both of these essays. So you'll have plenty of time to write the essays if you're sitting down and taking the test. Uh, if you think that you can start doing readings or doing the research, once you've seen the questions, it might be a little bit more difficult and you may not have enough time. So I'd recommend really studying the material prior to taking the assessment. Once you've clicked into the assessment, it will be timed and you will have to finish it within that one sitting. So don't think that you can come back to the test. You can't stop and start the test, which means make sure that you're finding a quiet place to study. Make sure that there are no distractions and you have the full two hours to dedicate to this test. This should be no different than if you are in a classroom setting and taking a test. So please make sure that you have the two hours allotted and are ready to take the test uh, when you click into it. Now, when you click into the test, you'll notice that there will be three questions to choose from you are only going to choose two of those questions, which means you'll answer the two questions that you have the best understanding of, and the third question you can just dump. So you'll answer only two of the three questions, and you'll essentially just answer one of them in the text bubble provided, and then skip down a couple spaces, and then answer the second one. So this is an in-text test which means when you click into the test, your timer will start. You'll have 120 minutes to write the two essays, write your first essay, uh, enter a few spaces so that there's a gap between one essay and the other, and then you can start your second essay. Uh, there's no need to title the essays. You can if you want, but ideally I should know uh, which topic you're choosing based on the first sentence of your uh, answers. So for these tests, you don't need to reference or use material from outside readings. Essentially, everything that you need is going to be based on the readings that we've done in class uh, or the readings that we've done, the lectures, 
or videos that you've seen within each week of Blackboard. So nothing of outside material is needed. Again, you don't need to quote or reference material. Just read the question, spend a few minutes thinking about how you're going to answer the question. Make sure you're reading the instructions carefully before beginning. Um, so that way you have a good idea of, of which question you're going to answer and how to answer that question. Think back to the lecture last week and the writing tips and how it should take a little bit of time to organize what you're going to say, what the question means, and what it is that you're going to write down. Now, I've provided two example questions for you. This first question deals with lock and primary and secondary qualities. So let's say the question says, what is the difference between primary and secondary qualities as they relate to Locke's theory of knowledge? Explain. Now, when you're answering this question, it's important that you're answering the question in paragraph form and that in your introduction, introduction paragraph, you're answering the question and providing reasons for your answer to the question so that I know exactly what your answer is in the first couple lines and, and how you're going about getting there. In the following paragraphs, you'll explain your reasons in more detail, providing information and examples from the text, lectures, and videos. So answer the question first and foremost, provide reasons, and then in the following paragraphs, you will defend those reasons with examples from the text. Uh, a, a good answer might begin a little something like what is written here. So for example, primary and secondary qualities are used by Locke to describe what we observe of objects from the innate characteristics of an object. Understanding the world for Locke is about experiencing what we can know of objects through our senses. Our senses are our only means of experiencing the world and thus gaining an idea of objects versus what is true of objects without our observing them. You might go on to then explain a little bit about what you mean and then start to provide examples from the text or lectures about the differences between primary and secondary qualities. Now, anytime that you're relating material, it's important that you're not just describing one thing and then describing another. You actually have to draw a comparison on why they're the same or why they're different. It's not good enough to just say qualities about one thing, say qualities about the other, and let the reader decide. You are telling the reader what to think. So you are explaining what is similar and different and providing examples. Another example question uh, is taken from Plato's story, Euthyphro. So imagine a question reading something like this. Evaluate Plato's argument that what is pious and what is approved of by the gods are not the same thing. Is it convincing? Can you think of any arguments Euthyphro could have given in reply? And does the argument change in a monotheistic religion? Again, you want to make sure that you're answering the question right from the get-go and providing reasons for why you think that answer is the correct answer. Once you've done that in the introduction, you will then provide following paragraphs that explain those reasons with examples from the text, lectures, and videos. So from the beginning, I should know what your answer is going to be and how you, uh, how you uh, tend to get there. From that, you will be providing the detailed information that will let me know that you have grasped the material and the context of your answer and, and why this is important and how it relates to the question. The beginning of an answer like this might look something like the example provided. So, in the story Euthyphro, Plato argues that what is approved of by the gods is not the same as what is pious. 
This argument, convincing as it may have been in his time, is not convincing when you think of monotheistic religions today. According to Plato, piety cannot be the same as what is approved of by the gods because there are many different gods, each with their own idea of piety. You might then go on to explain how multiple accounts of piety can't really get us to understanding what pious means because of its subjective nature to the gods. This, however, might change in a monotheistic religion where there's only one god, so perhaps you can tailor your answer for a question like this to the idea that, well, with one god, a lot of the problems are solved because it's what this particular god says is pious is pious. That, however, could also be problematic, though, as you go through and remember the story of Euthyphro and how even if a god thinks that something is pious, is it pious because the god says so? Or does the god approve of it because it's pious? And, and start drawing the distinction between those two ideas. Again, answering the question in the beginning and then providing reasons and examples from the lectures, videos, and reading. Now, it's important to note when you get a question like this that has perhaps two or more questions embedded in it, you're finding the main question and answering that question so that your reasons for the answer answer the other questions as well. So here you'll notice that I tell you that the argument is not convincing and then from there I explain why it might be the case that a better argument could be made through a monotheistic religion because that is based off of the first important question of is it convincing? Now when you're writing these essays uh, keep mind of the rubric and here will be the rub rubric I'll also post it in the instructions for the test and there are three main sections that you will have to touch on so first of all one of the things the most important thing that I'm going to be looking for is that you are answering the question directly so are you answering the question or are you just explaining material that has to do with a topic but not really addressing the question? It's imperative that you answer the question directly and then work to prove why that answer is the correct answer. In addition to answering the question, it's also very important that you're providing examples from the text and lecture to support those answers. It shows that you've done the reading and listened to the lectures and understand the material and how those examples relate to your answer and the topic being discussed. So you'll answer the question, you'll provide examples from your text and lecture to support that answer, and lastly, just make sure that you're using proper mechanics. Now, because it's a time test, I'm not going to be um, hard on you for grammar or spelling. However, you are going to be writing this on a computer, so even in a text box, there should still be spell check. And it needs to be written in a grammatical way where I can understand what it is that you're saying. Make sure that you're incorporating an introduction paragraph and a body paragraph and make sure that you are writing in a way that are, you're clearly expressing your ideas and what you're taking the answer to these questions to be. Now, if you have any questions, please make sure you're asking me in the discussion post or coming to one of the Zoom meetings between 3 and 4 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, I will put the test live and you'll be able to take it. Make sure that you're setting aside your two hours and that you're answering the questions as completely as you can without providing irrelevant and unnecessary material. Thank you. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. 
Otherwise, best of luck on the midterm and enjoy your spring break afterwards. Take care.